Welcome to the Success Pick and Mix podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Raby, a professional pick and mixer. I'm a personal brand coach, a speaker, an actor, a creator, and a podcaster. I'm on a mission to help you find and create your version of success, your pick and mix of life and business on your terms, a blend that complements your personality, your goals, and your circumstances. Since 2018, I've been sharing interviews and mini episodes to help you unlock your next step, to make it real and make it happen. Round here, we dream big. We go for the ideal version. We talk about money and make moves our future selves would be proud of. This podcast is free and available for you whenever you need it. So do rate, review and subscribe for new episodes. If you want to go deeper with my support, check out my freebies house and unlock the rooms you choose. NikkiRaby.com forward slash freebies house. I also have workshops, programs and one-on-one bespoke offerings. For prices and availability, go to NikkiRaby.com. Thank you, as always, for spending some time with me and my guests. Now, on to today's episode. In today's episode, I'm talking to Dr. Pragya Agarwal, an academic and creative strategist, helping others reignite their creativity and launch their creative careers and their businesses. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, Pragya. How are you? Hello, Nikki. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. I'm very Thank well. You. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, I'd love just to hear an introduction from you to begin with about what you do and what your business is all about. Yes. So I run two businesses. One is a creative studio, an eco studio called Hedge and Hawk Prince which is an artisanal studio. So I make um, handmade linocut prints and illustrations. And it's all about making relationships through gifts and cards, um, tapping into local sense of place. So using local slangs and words and unique language. Um, The second one is a social enterprise, which I set up last year called The Art Tiffin, and it's all about nourishing the heart and the mind through art and creativity and campaigning for creativity and mental well-being. So we donate to mental health charities. And also one integral part of that is raising awareness of cruelty-free art materials uh, because there's not much awareness about those. And um, so it's everything that comes in the gift subscription boxes is vegan and cruelty-free, it's like having a creative hug in a box, so inspiring, reigniting creativity. And I work with organizations and individuals to help them with their creativity and creative thinking and how to drive innovation through that. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. That's so great. And I feel like creativity is so important and it's certainly something that runs through um, all of my work and how I like to live my life, I guess. How have how did you um, get into this area? I think since um, a very young age, um, I didn't realize it until recently, looking back, that my mom is really creative and that's been such a big part of our lives when I was growing up. Um, so although I studied science initially at school, um, but from very child, early childhood, we were encouraged a lot of different creative pursuits. We did a lot of art and every, there used to be lots of artistic projects. Then I studied architecture, actually, um, as my first degree, and um, which is just a combination of art and science, really, a perfect combination. So um, and then I kind of um, it's always been a part of my life that um, and just enjoying being to art galleries, learning about art, looking at art, doing art, interior design projects and design projects. And then since my PhD, I was an academic, so um, I wasn't really formally doing any kind of art or creative projects. But as I said, it was always a big part of my life. Um, So it's kind of a seed was sown since I was born, I suppose. Yes. And when um, it being a a social enterprise, what do you think it gives people? What, um, What do you think that people are looking for? And um, needing that outlet um, in their life? I think um, so. it started off from my own 
and experiences with anxiety and PND and um, just uh, realized that art and creativity were really, really helped me through that period because my twins were born two years ago, um, had quite a difficult early months with very serious colic and reflux. We never slept. They cried for 12 hours. And so and during that period, there was such a justifiably so f- much focus on them. But, but as new parents, we were just completely exhausted. And I realized that I self-care and me time wasn't something that was on my priority yeah. list at all. And I think a lot of parents yeah. do that. We, we tend to ignore the need for having a bit of me time or we feel guilty if we think about self-care. And and I realized just five to 10 minutes of something, doing something creative really eased my anxiety and the sense of overwhelm and any stress that I was feeling. And it really made me happy. So the whole thing started from there. And um, I think what the Artifin does is to kind of give you permission or encouragement, inspire you to create create something or just find that five to 10 minutes of your time and using creativity as a means of self-care and saying that it's actually really important to do that because um, it's been proven by psychology and neuroscience as well that when you look at art or make art, it actually creates happy hormones, so dopamine in your brain. So um, so that's what it kind it it provides. It provides that that inspiration, that spark. A lot of the people who I talk to say they're not creative. And I think I want to dispel that myth that somebody's not creative because I think we are all creative in different ways. It's just different forms of creativity as yes. well. I, I totally agree. And it's funny that even at school, people will say, oh, you're not good at drawing. Yes. Or this person can do those bubble letters that were really popular. Or, you, you know, you, you're <laughs> exactly. very aware from a, from being a very small child, actually, who's the fastest runner, who's the person who's good at maths, or who's the tallest, and you're very aware of each other. Yeah, I think so. I And I really... Um... As a parent, as a mom of three girls, I find that notion um, quite awful in a way, yes. for a, a use of a better word, because I think children from a very early age are kind of put into these boxes and they're not allowed to um, achieve the potential or extend, explore other possibilities. And that's why I really am very passionate about encouraging creativity and creative thinking from a very young age in children. Um, and and saying that, OK, you need to um, encourage and, and creative thinking is not just about um, doing art, but it's about this attitude of being able to think outside the box mm. and being able to take risks. And there is a research that's shown that children by the age of 10 or 12 already start to self-edit and self-criticize. And before that, they are quite confident as artists and they wow. would be very free um, in terms of mark making and just being very natural in what they create and they don't judge their work as much. But slowly these judgments come in. So that's why um, I designed these Art Explorer boxes and I also run a Facebook group, Raising Creative Kids. And it's the whole mission is to and to encourage this love of art and art appreciation and art history and creativity from a very young age in children before they these kind of self-edit kind of come into play at a, at a later age. So inspired that confidence in them before that. And how important have you found it to have the really strong message behind what it is that you're building? I feel that um, any brand or business, um, it's really important to have your values really um, clear from the very start because um, your own personal values and the brand values, they have to align. And if it's a clear message and a consistent message, I think people who are um, your customers or potential clients, they um, they are more aware of what you're doing and you're trying to make a difference and the social impact. And increasingly, it's becoming more and more important for people to know that a brand is doing or having a social impact or actually they're engaging with the community or they want to do something good. And it's increasingly becoming important for people to buy from ethical brands. Yes. And I think that transparency, transparency and honesty is really important. Um, and um, I find that it kind of keeps me 
grounded and when i have tough days as an entrepreneur which we all do yes. um it just the values the knowing that this is why i'm doing this it's really important that keeps me kind of anchored and grounded and pushes it pushes me forward as well oh that's so true that little switch that you can go no nope, come on this is why i'm yeah, doing it this exactly. is what is going on because i think sometimes that i think you touched on such a great point that about being an entrepreneur it, it it's full on and it presses all of your buttons and you do see every single emotion possible it's it's a very uh, it's the biggest self-development journey of your life I always exactly. think exactly yes I completely agree Nikki and I've learned so much just in the last year a couple of years um, and we start this journey a lot of the creative entrepreneurs start the journey thinking this is what i'm passionate about but then there's so much to learn and we're constantly yes. learning every day and there's so many aspects and elements to running a business it's just mind boggling we just kind of need ninja uh, things to take tricks i think absolutely yeah. and from your making your switch from being an academic to moving creativity and being an entrepreneur more to the forefront how have you how have you done that what practical steps really helped you to make huge progress especially when your girls are are still relatively young um it's been tough um and I no think, sleep okay. as well oh my goodness <laughs> you're in my no sleep camp <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> then after a while, you just get used to it. If you, you get do. an hour, you just think that's fantastic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I think, it, yeah, it's, it's been tough, as I said. But I, I think if the message, because I'm so passionate about what I'm doing and the message I'm putting across, and it is, it that's really important for me, the purpose of the brand, the values that I hold very dear, and trying to make the change and difference and little steps. And it's really important for me I, I to I don't know as a parent to be a role model to my children as well yeah. to show them that resilience is really important. You knock back, but you get up and you do it again. And life in life, there'll be setbacks, but that's what you do. You just try again and you do something. And it's important to drive yourself forward and be self motivated. Um, it gives me a lot of fulfillment, and that is really important as a parent as well. I think being mum is very important, but doing something that really makes me very happy for myself is very important as well. I so. agree. And I know that I'm a better per parent when I show up as a whole person. And that's not to say, you know, for half the week, I'm doing my own thing. And then the other time I'm being a parent, but it's, it's bringing all my experience, my life experience to the table and the things that I enjoy. Um, uh, the year before last for Christmas, I asked for a radio because having a radio in the kitchen, it's very old school, um, was such a part of my childhood of, you know, dancing around the kitchen and it always <laughs> being in the background. And there was a real familiarity to it. And I love that now that I have that with my son and, you know, whether you're doing the dishes or putting a wash on or just dancing in the living room or the kitchen, it, it, it feels really good as well. So, yeah, bringing it all to the table is always good. Um, I loved what you said about how you can turn obstacles into opportunities. How has that shown up for you? I think it's been a constant thread in my life and I'm not sure um, where I get it from. I think my, <laughs> again from my mom, I think she's the most resilient person I know and so strongest person in a very gentle way she's not one of those who says i'm a really strong person or looking at her you wouldn't think she's strong but i think that inner strength really matters yes to her and it shows in everything she does and that is something that i've really learned from her um just a lot of setbacks um personal setbacks professional setbacks um and it's just um i i think there's always a positive um, you can always turn it around and not saying it doesn't take time. Um, but I think accepting that as well, saying that, OK, I've had a knock and it's OK for me to feel like this is really important as well. Um, a lot of the time I pretended that I was OK, but that kind of had a lot of effect on me and my yes. mental health because I wasn't articulating how I, was, how I was feeling. So that's really important as well, to be able to talk to somebody mm. and to be able to talk about your mental health and well-being as well. Um, 
but just my eldest, I mean, I've written about this in a few things. And I think recently it's been quite therapeutic for me to actually be open about how the kind of journey I've had and the experiences I've had, because I feel like when people read that, it's, it, it can help people because they can think that, okay, uh, it's okay to talk about these things. I don't yes. have to feel afraid. Nobody will judge me. Mm. I'm not being silly for feeling like this. Um, yes. So I think that's really important. Yes. As well. I, feel, I feel also as well that all of these new things are coming to light or these new ways of dealing with life. And I think it's wonderful because the amount of times, especially in my own childhood, is you would say something and a teacher would say, no, you don't. You don't feel mm. like that. And you think, mm. well, no, I do actually. But, you know, we were sort of that seen and not heard or quite exactly. down. And um, mm. I'm, I'm really trying to do it with my son of sort of saying, how do you feel? What do you need? What's going on? And really get him to articulate and connect with his feelings as well. I think it's um, been really important. And how have you, I hate this word balance, it drives me up the wall, but um, (laughs) it it seems that since you've had your twins that you've got a new, even though however tough it's been, that you've had this new lease of life again. How have you managed to put the wheels in motion in terms of um, moving forward with the business? Um, I think children... Um, can be such a driving force as well. And I know balance is such a myth because <laughs> uh, um, um, we are all striving for it, but we just have to accept that what we do at that time is the best we are doing. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> so when I met eldest, I was really young and I brought her up as a single parent. I did my PhD and everything mm. alongside with that. And the single parent we moved from India to the UK and I brought her up and and did my academic career and moved ahead. So it's always been kind of part of me that somehow having a child drives me yes. forward. I was just <laughs> gonna say, did you know how strong you were in that situation? Did you know that you had that in you, as it were? I never actually even until recently when people started telling me that's amazing, you did that, <laughs> I never thought that I was being strong. It's just something I had to do and you just get on the task and you think this is what I have to do and this is what I will do. And right. um, and I wasn't particularly, I mean, there were times you don't always feel strong. There are times when you have wobbles and you think I can't do this. But when you're a parent, you just have to get up and do it because somebody else relies on you, I suppose, yeah. as well. Um, if I'm today, I'm feeling ill, or, um, I can't just stay in bed or if I'm feeling anxious or depressed I can't just wallow in it because yeah. I don't have the time and the space to do it because my two kids now <laughs> who are 21 month old rely on me so yeah it's been tough but I think um, having my businesses or have has really really made me a better parent in some ways um, and also just um, I just Having that me time, because that's, um, I, as you said, bringing yourself completely to the table is just all part of me, the whole whole bundle. So, um, yeah, it, it, it just kind of <sighs> hustle and <laughs> just <Yeah>. get along. <laughs> have there been any things that have just made all the difference or have really um, surprised you of how effective they've been? In terms of efficiency or productivity? Yes. Yeah. I mean, anything to make life easier, I guess. Um, I could really, I would really love a cleaner, but uh, we don't, I can't can't find one. Um, uh, In terms of, I think I've been surprised by the number of women I've met online who and the communities that I've formed online. Yes. Um, Working from home can be quite isolating, especially as a parent when you're dealing with so much other stuff around you and you're trying to do this as well um and you don't have to the opportunity to bounce ideas but it's just been amazing how many inspiring women i've met the networks i've formed the kind of advice i've got the, the, it's just um the space to be able to say how i feel and i've been really surprised by that, that there's so many amazing women yes. out there that's been fantastic. My husband's a great, great support. He takes up so much of, I mean, we are an equal partnership. I don't feel like I'm kind of 
being a mother or a father is about being a parent. So we equally pitch in. We don't have any close friends or family nearby, so we don't have that support here. Um, but otherwise, just making lists. I make a lot of lists. Yeah, me <laughs> and, too. <I> <laughs> and just having able to, again, I think the passion and for enthusiasm for what I'm doing really drives me forward because there are times when I would say, okay, I'm really tired after they've gone to bed um, at 10 o'clock or 10, 13, 11, and I can still find the strength to work till maybe two or three in the morning or something just because I want to do it or it's not about somebody forcing me to do it, I think. Yes. And coming back to what you love, I think is so key in those moments. Exactly. And I remind myself of how lucky I am to actually have a career that I really love and that it's not, you know, I don't get that, oh no, it's Monday again. I think, <laughs> oh great, what are we doing this week? And um, Exactly. But equally, that's a conscious decision as well. And um yeah, it's always a work in progress, isn't it? I, I, I absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Yes. And have there been any books that have really um, spurred you on or helped you change direction or have just given really practical advice that you always refer back to? Um, there have been quite a few. I mean, I, 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 I don't have... I used to read so much, but I haven't had time to actually sit down and read the whole book. So it's been like a magpie kind of situation. I pick yes. pick up um, books and I take bits and pieces from them that I feel are relevant to me. But earlier on, when I was setting up my business and after that, so I was talking about the Brand Stylist book. It's about uh, by Fiona Humberston. Yes. And I love that book because it's really gave me very practical tips about how to think about brand colors and and the image that you want to portray and and how to keep it consistent and it took me a while to get my head around it and in terms of what I really wanted but it made me think a lot about these things initially and about what what different colors mean and colors have been something that I'm really fascinated by always so a lot of the other books that I've been reading about color um color psychology there's something called alchemy of paint and there is another book about color uh which i can't remember the author but i can send you the link that's fine yeah we'll add it into the show notes (laughs) yeah so a lot of I, i read a lot of books about color but then uh, a couple uh, another book was making ideas happen by scott belsky um and it is all about how you overcome the obstacle between vision and reality. Mm-hmm. So you have a vision, but how do you make it real? And how do you actually put your ideas into action? That's something that really resonated with me and really still resonates with me because of all the whole de- design thinking and creative thinking. And as an architect and designer, that's my background about how you make, how you put ideas into a conceptualization into practical things, how you bridge that gap and how you bridge the gap between what you see and what others see as well, visualize right. and percept. And that's the whole thing about design thinking as well. Um, so it, that's, those are some of the things that books that I've read and they really resonated with me, but there are a lot more others as well, which um, have been really useful. And where would you like to be in in five years' time? Is there, um, and this could be in, in business or, or life or, or a combination of the two? I know, it's um, a big question. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's always <laughs> tricky to think think ahead. Um, I'm never, bu- my life's taken so many terms. I've never been one to plan and mm. it just suddenly happens. But in terms of um, family, I think I would like to ha- us to have um I don't know, a more calmer family routine. And I'm yes. sure that will happen as the kids are older, more healthier, um, uh, traveling a bit more and doing things that we used to enjoy a lot, like going to theater and art galleries and museums and doing more of that, um, more healthy nutrition and food and growing our own vegetables and fruits and all those things that have kind of taken a back seat recently and just yes. being back to that. And, uh, just eating together is very important for me. Cooking mm-hmm. together is really important for me. In terms of my business, um, I'm trying to bring, a, I do a lot of disparate things. I'll do a lot of writing as well. And I'm trying to bring everything together under one umbrella as as um, 
as kind of a creative umbrella. And um, I want to pull all those different strands together. And I've started um, doing um, some more one-to-one and group work um, in times of creative strategies with people um, and helping them launch their creative careers. So that's something that I really want to push forward as well. So um, just support more people, support more entrepreneurs, and 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 just from my own experience, distill it so that people can benefit from what I've learned Fantastic. through running my own businesses as well. Oh, that's so good and so inspiring. And just I I loved it that um, actually a lot of the things that you're saying are, are life simple pleasures. And I think sometimes when you're in those early years of parenting that just even you know imagining a time where you could have an afternoon of just you know cooking leisurely in the kitchen it's, exactly. it's you can't understand that that would ever happen again but it will people say it, it does will. it comes back and it does it does and it'll be fantastic it, <laughs> I, I cannot wait it will be great <laughs> um and so if people would like to find out more about you and your brilliant projects where should they go i'll also add it into the show notes but um, just if people are listening in the car or on the move, where should they go and, and have a look? So um, it's hedgehogprints.com and theartiffin.co.uk. If you're a parent and um, or somebody encouraging creativity in kids and interested in the Art Explorer kit for kids, box for kids, um, do have a look at our Facebook group, which is Raising Creative Kids. And... Um, and if you're a creative entrepreneur and want to connect with others in a supportive community, it's called the Creativist Hub, which is a Facebook group as well. Mm-hmm. And hopefully um, I'm trying to set up a new website, which brings a lot of things together. So I will that should that's a work in progress at the moment for the next four or five months. So we'll see how that goes. How exciting. Well, as and when you make the updates, I will update the show notes as well. But thank Fantastic. you so much for your time today. I feel like I want to go and like draw and paint. And even though in my head I'm saying, oh, I'm not good at that. I'm, I'm going to try it anyway. And we started doing the... a bit of like um, potato printing. Oh, the other day, that's which was, fantastic. Which was great. That's lovely. And then, um, my partner and I just got a bit competitive, like, oh, no, you made the perfect <laughs> star. Oh, yours is better. But it's not about that. It's about the no. taking part. It's about the process as well. Exactly. And it's uh, and when you're. And we a lot of us feel afraid about setting the first mark on paper, but just doodle something. That's also that kind of get the creative juices flow sometimes. So brilliant. Thank you so much. I know you're doing so much great stuff in the world. So thank you for that. And if anybody who is listening would like to hear more, please go over to NikkiRaby.com forward slash podcast and you can find all the show notes there. Likewise, if you enjoyed the episode, please feel free to rate and review and subscribe and share with your friends. We'll see you very soon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already, feel free to rate, review and subscribe for all the brand new episodes. If you want to go deeper with my support, check out my freebies house and unlock the rooms you choose. NikkiRaby.com forward slash freebies house. I also have workshops, programs and one-on-one bespoke offerings. For prices, availability or just to have a chat with me, go to NikkiRaby.com. Thank you as always for spending some time with me and my guests and I'll see you next time.